If you've ever wondered where the line is between artificial intelligence and humanity, you're not going to find the answer here. Zone 414. Zone 414 is the new sci-fi thriller that's dropped where we follow Guy Pierce's David and it's set in the near future. It's pretty much set in Night City from Cyberpunk 2077. Like they must have just looked at like the characters' styles, the setting. It's just Cyberpunk. Like this is just Cyberpunk the movie, only not that. I'll explain. So in here we're following David, who's an ex-police officer who has been hired to hunt down this rich man's daughter in zone 414. Now this rich dude like created androids and they're indistinguishable from humans and the only place that they can roam free and interact with humans is in zone 414. It's kind of like a bit of a testing ground for them. So the movie opens quite strongly here. It shows David going through a kind of trial to see if he's fit for the job. It starts off with a kind of interaction with an android, then moves on to a kind of psychology session, and then when he's passed both of those, he can meet Marlon, who is going to effectively hire him and have him hunt for his daughter. Obviously, the movie's not as cut and dry as finding a daughter. We realise very early that David is just a logical thinking guy. He takes his emotion out of his decision making and just moves forward. Now, I don't know if that was a choice specifically to try and like balance out this Android thing or it was just a bit poorly written. I'll give it benefit of the doubt and say he was just straight to the point to try and complement the emotions felt elsewhere in the movie. So he's been told to find Jane in here and Jane's going to help him find Melissa, the daughter. Now, Jane's an android. She's like Marlon's prize project and all these androids they're just sold on for companionship really but in zone 414 jane has a job where she has a lot of clients and they can kind of do what they want with her but she's been programmed to feel like despair and some specific emotions so see so you, you feel like the movie's going to lean into you know where is the line between humanity and emotion and, and just artificial intelligence and programming and every time it seems to move towards that line the movie just jumps forward and forgets about it. The setting here was a bit of a letdown because all of the establishing shots look fantastic. The lighting's great, it's got that kind of neon, very bright, very exciting lighting, hence the Cyberpunk 2077. However, that's only the establishing shots. Once they set it, then they move into the building or into the room, they mostly just look like IKEA showrooms. You know, they don't have that flair to them anymore. And that's a little disappointing when the majority of the movie is spent indoors in these rooms, but then it'll come cut outside and look gorgeous, but then just move away again. I'm not gonna lie, I was bored through this movie. So with Jane, she's having problems of her own. Someone's fucking with her and sending her messages saying they want to kill her. So they help each other out. Jane gives information on Melissa and David says he's gonna help Jane find out who it is that's messing with her and who wants to kill her. And the movie does just jump around. It's one of those crime mystery movies where they just keep getting new names to go back to. So it's just a lot of moving around the city, speaking with new characters, and then when they leave the room, that character phones another character they've spoken with to update them that they've just spoken. And that just kind of recycles for most of the film. And this message that the rich people are just fucked up, it's laid on so thick here. From Marlon, who gives him the job in the first place. He's a weird guy. Even his hair and his makeup and the prosthetics, everything there. It was a little bit overkill. But then there's other characters you meet in the film which are way too overkill. You know, you meet a character who likes to hurt these androids. And again, it's just another rich asshole. That's what most of them are. We know that rich people in these universes are assholes, but they're just so one dimensional, every single one of them. You zone out, you just don't care after a while here. Guy Pierce is good. But as I said, benefit of the doubt being that him having no emotion and just being very logical does balance out with Jane, who is the android feeling emotion. So I feel like that's why they've done it. And he's got a bit of a spotted past, shall we say, where he's had trouble dealing with people in his life, where they, they are unable to control their emotions. I won't say too much about it, but that's where he has a bit of a problem. That's why he's such a closed off guy. And Jane starts to kind of open him up a little. That's why he's happy to help her, because he sees the problem that she's in. I guess I was just wanting this movie to challenge me on thinking, where is that cutoff point? You know, when does, you know, the character of Jane effectively become human? And they didn't try to answer it. Most of the movie, they just treat her like a human and write her like a human, except points where 
She has to be an android for the narrative, of course. But in their interactions, we know just when they're talking with each other or coming up with a plan, she's just as human as he is. In those moments where they have to, you know, narratively make her an android, she'll read into somebody's records because she just knows them or she's able to link into them. That doesn't pull that question forward. It's just there for the plot to move forward. And then you realise there's a kind of rivalries throughout the film between these rich assholes and that they don't exactly get on, which again, you're not going to imagine they do. But where I was just expecting a bit more, I suppose, is from this opening where he just shoots an android and he gets questioned on why he was able to do it because he knew that they were an android and he cleverly thought it out because this company that created the androids asked him to kill a machine. So of course he put two and two together and just knew for sure that was going to be an android, otherwise the company would be complicit in a murder. So I was expecting from that point maybe a few fight scenes with androids, maybe androids and other people. But every person he met was just an asshole. And the one android that he spent the movie with was pretty nice. That's as cookie cutter as this film gets. Quite boring to be honest. It looks nice in the establishing shots. The interactions are okay, they're serviceable. And the overall story and mystery, that was quite good. I didn't quite see what exactly was going on until, you know, the movie revealed that. But I've seen a lot better mysteries. Certainly a lot better executed mysteries. You know, it's like someone trying to take down a god complex. But again, even that doesn't get addressed. You feel it. You feel that some characters in here have that complex. But again, they're just kind of left to get on with it. So I don't know what the need was. Where I'm falling on this is if you've got the time, give it a watch. It looks nice. It feels like Blade Runner's, you know, little brother. You know, he just wants to be his big brother so bad, but he just doesn't know what it is that made his brother cool. Does that make sense? But look, have you seen I forgot the name of it there. It's that boring fucking hell. Have you seen Zone 414? If you have, do you agree with me or not? Let me know down below. And also, whilst you're there, hit subscribe. It lets me know that you want to see more of this content. But thank you so much for watching.